Hello everyone, Abby here, Purple Cottage Crafts, and we are coming from my laundry room today. Aren't you guys so excited? So Steve is in the um, front part of the house where we have our shared space, and he is in a meeting. So I'm back here, so I'm not disturbing him or anything like that. So I, I don't know if this is going to look upside down for you guys or not, because I typically don't have my camera in the direction it is right now. So if it is upside down, I apologize. So these three items here are just a few of the pieces that I thrifted uh, recently when we were in Oregon. I did a video on that. So these are all been laundered and I thought what I would do is maybe just do a video showing you guys how I break down different articles of clothing uh, when I thrift them. Not that it's some new inventive way or anything like that. I just uh, wanted to have that kind of a video on my channel. Um, because I have had people in the past ask me, you know, like, how do you deconstruct this into, you know, um, usable fabric, so to speak. So for me, quite a few years ago, I would never um, even go into the clothing sections at the different thrift shops or at yard sales, things along that line. And I thought to myself, why am I not doing that? Because this is just yardage is what this is and so I have found some amazing pieces of clothing and accessories meaning scarves things like that that are great to use in your different uh, crafting projects stitching projects so what I have here first one I feel like it's gonna be upside down but that's okay so this is a skirt that I showed you guys in that video and I'm hoping the color comes across um, okay so I'm gonna be taking this apart and just wanted to show you that one and then the next one is this uh, women's jacket, like dress jacket. And there is, oops, there is a lot of fabric here, you guys. And this is such a great textile. Sorry for the buttons hitting the washer. But this is such a great textile. I'm so excited to um, have this to stitch on. And I'm also going to be repurposing the linings as well. The shoulder pads, I'm not sure. Some shoulder pads I can deconstruct and use in different projects, but sometimes I um, I can't. And this one here is probably my favorite. Um, yes, because it's purple, but I love, love this pattern. It's this beautiful like brocade type pattern. Let me hold it up so you guys can see it better. And then we look at all that texture. It's just beautiful. So this was in the men's section, but it is a women's uh, dress jacket. So I'm glad I peeked in the men's section as well. And the lining, of course, will be reused. Everything's going to be repurposed as much as possible because I, you know, I don't want to be wasteful and throw away parts that can definitely be used in different stitching projects. So I will have to wait until he is done with his meeting before I can go back in and film myself cutting these apart and, and chit chat with you guys as I do so. But I wanted to film the intro now so I could get it done. And then when he's done with his meeting, I can just jump right into doing some more filming and sharing this with you guys. So I will see you in just a little bit. You guys, I am so upset with myself. I filmed an entire intro. I was gabbing away. I was talking about the different tools that I use and how I kind of deconstruct the fabrics and our, like the clothing and stuff that I thrift. And come to find out, I never hit record. And I didn't know that until I went to go edit the video. I even did a um, file recovery program on my laptop and it just wasn't there. So the only um, other option is Abby forgot to to turn the camera on, which I've done before. So I have limited time to film this little quick intro again. My husband has a meeting coming up. So the tools that I use when I am deconstructing fabric, oh, let me back up for a second. This is my little disclaimer. I am in no way, shape or form trying to come across like nobody else does it this way. No, 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 that is not what I mean. I'm just kind of showing you guys how I do it because I've been asked in the past, you know, how I take apart the fabric to, to get the most out of it. So that's what I'm doing here. So I don't use my really good, um, you know, like fabric scissors. I just use this pair here. You know, this is this is a really good pair too, but I try to preserve my nicer, higher end um, fabric scissors for when I'm cutting, you know, like nicer fabric and stuff. Uh, this at the moment is my favorite rotary trimmer and I'll link these things below if I can um, find them. This I know I can. These I got at a convention probably 15 years ago. So I don't even know what brand they were. They were just at a booth. And then um, this is Fisker's brand too. So this is my favorite rotary trimmer to use right now. And not because it's purple. That's part of it, but that's not the whole reason. So I love this one and it is a 45 millimeter. I use this baby to cut through textiles 
thin, super thin fabric. I love it. It's a great, it's a great rotary trimmer. And then for the scissors, I just kind of grab a couple pairs that have the fine, uh, fine tip on them. I do have another set that is a little bit smaller or more of a point. Um, I'm sure all of us have these. These are Cutter B scissors. I've had those for forever. And that some because sometimes when I'm trying to get into the seams, I may I can't get the tip of these because they're you know more of a blunt tip. And I will use these, and then they work just great. And then my most favorite tool that I use when I'm taking apart clothing is using my seam ripper. I have a purple one. I don't know where it's at, but this one <laughs> works just the same even though it's not purple. So I use my seam ripper. All right, so sorry if that was loud, you guys. I usually have a cloth on my table, so I don't do that. So these are some articles of clothing. I went out into Abby's Annex and um, dug through my totes of thrifted clothing that I haven't taken apart yet. So I wanted to kind of talk you through this because in the following clips, I am actually taking the two jackets and a skirt that I recently thrifted apart. So I'm just going to kind of talk this part real quick here. I will be taking these apart um, as well, but just not right at the moment. I've got to finish up some other projects. All right, so this is a really nice cotton linen blend uh, tank top I thrifted. So what I will do on something like this where it's got straps like a spaghetti strap or something like that you know, like sundresses that kind of thing I will uh, just kind of take a peek at the material uh, turn it inside out so I can kind of look at the different seams and then what I will do is pretty much the same as um, as what I do for jeans and shirts and the like. I will just look at this see where the seams are and then I will just simply either take my scissors or I'll use my rotary trimmer which I show you both ways in the following clips and I just go along the seam right here and I just you know cut this apart and I try to keep these in as large a pieces as I possibly can that way when I go to use them for a project I will have the most um, fabric and I have more options that way than if I was to cut it in little like you know little um, square piece like six by six or something like that unless you want to do it that size of course that's completely fine but for me when I'm first taking these apart I don't really have a specific project in mind so I like to have as much material as possible so like with the straps right here I would just simply go in and just cut the straps off and they just have these two straps that are great to use for you know journal ties page um, tabs all that kind of fun stuff I always cut the branding strips off tags off unless they're really cool then I keep them otherwise I just you know toss those so for this one this is a pretty simple straightforward it's only got two seams and that's just down the side so this is a very simple one to take apart so there's that and then for long sleeve shirts this happens to be just um, a men's shirt here I always remove the buttons I keep the buttons even if they're not ones that I think I will probably use, I still keep them because you never know. And then I can add them like in future kits and stuff too or, you know, that kind of a thing. So I will usually leave the pocket on because I want that option in case I want to use this on a journal cover or something. Then I'll have the pocket already there. Now, if you take the pocket off, of course, you can stitch it back on again. But for um, my I typically do is I will just leave the pocket there. And then same situation, I will just, uh, so sometimes it depends on the stitching. Like I could use my scissors or my rotary trimmer on this side or this side and it's going to be basically the same. But like, for example, how the seam looks on this one, you know, it's all nice and flat as it's supposed to be. But on the inside, it's got that seam allowance. And so it depends on if I want to, um, you know, cut on this side or this one. It's just a preference. I mean, you guys can just decide on your own. Not sure if that makes sense. I'm trying to hurry, so I apologize if I'm not being too super clear. And what I will do is I like to remove the sleeves first. So I cut the sleeves completely off of the garment. And then I go in and do the collar because I like to keep that in one piece as well. And then I will just have the, you know, the main body of the shirt or the blouse left. So then I have you know, let's just pretend the sleeves are off. So those are the sleeves. These are off. Then I have this whole body of the shirt. If it has a pleat like this one does, I leave it because I might want to have that detail on a stitched project. And then um, sometimes I will cut these into panels. Like where I will, which you, you guys will see me do. It's like what I mean by that is the sleeves gone, the collar's gone, and the buttons are gone. This uh, seam right here, I'll cut this seam off so I have just this chunk. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side and just have this front panel and if I come across a garment that has multiple seams then I'll usually take those apart too just kind of depends like I said on the size of the garment so that's kind of what I do there for the shirts and then for pants you know pretty much the same thing now there's a little bit more fabric usually around the waistband of pants uh, which I love sometimes I will when I take the waistband off sometimes I'll keep 
this intact like where it's the lighter and then the outside but you can also pick these stitches apart and then have um, you know uh, two strips does that make any sense so let me try to explain that better so I'll cut the waistband off and then I can keep it together meaning where I'm going to see this side and this side but sometimes I'll go in and separate this one and this one and then I have two different complete uh, different strips with different colors or different material and the pockets on these are so cool I love that so I'll cut the pockets out on this type of a situation I don't typically leave the pants pockets in like on the back so I'll again I'll move all the buttons cut off the zippers and then I'll take out the lining and keep that and then I will just you know cut the legs cut it kind of straight down the middle so then I have like one pant leg minus the um, color or the color <laughs> the waistband and then I will sometimes go through and again cut the seams again on both so I have two separate pant legs instead of just one again it just depends on what I want to do so I don't have like one set hard rule because it kind of depends on the mood I'm in I guess so this seam here on the inside and on the outside they're both pa uh, basically the same they don't have that loose seam allowance they've actually stitched the seam allowance down so that makes it a little bit easier to cut on the inside of the outside of the garment whatever you want to do and let's see in the skirt that I'm going to be showing you guys in an upcoming clip I was talking about how I keep the zippers these are just fantastic to use for so many different projects and if you're a seamstress like you know where you make clothing I do not <laughs> then you can reuse the zipper course too if you want to so um, I especially like the metal zippers those are really fun too use in different things so for this type of situation with these pants I probably would keep the pocket intact unless it starts to come apart when I take off the waistband either way don't care I will also keep the belt loops uh, sometimes attached sometimes I'll take them off and these are great to use for your small um, you know collage stitch bits or whatever kind of project page tabs all those things that we all know how to use um, our different fabrics and stuff so all right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up more minutes before my husband's got to get on his meeting. I apologize if I was talking faster than normal. I just want to get this video edited and uploaded so I can move on to the next thing. And I, of course, will be um, taking these apart. So I will be doing more of the videos showing you guys how I take apart, like, you know, full dresses, um, things that have lots of layers, that kind of thing. So I'll probably save these for that upcoming video. Okay, so these are the basic tools, as I mentioned, that I use. Rotary trimmer, larger pair of scissors, a couple different types of smaller scissors, and my seam ripper and i think that's it all right you guys i hope you enjoy the rest of the video and i'll see you soon bye for now So I have just removed the lining from the body of the skirt and what I will do next is I um, will sometimes take, well I guess it depends on what part I want to work on next, but I'm not too particular about cutting this lining away from the zipper. I was more uh, more concerned about preserving as much of this material as possible so that's probably what I will do is I will just go ahead and just cut this off now if this was like a nicer type of lining or maybe a different kind of fabric or something then I would go ahead and take the time to pick apart the seams but for something like this I'm not going to worry about it because I have quite a bit here plus all the lining from the other jackets I'm going to be doing as well so that's what I will do not right now because that's you know just me cutting this apart you know that's not very exciting so I'll put this to the side in my next thing I'm going to work on my or my next focus area I should say and is going to be on deconstructing this skirt now sometimes I will keep it just like this and then I'll just you know store it away just like I would you know any normal types of fabrics or anything because I may not want to start cutting the panels apart because I might want some it's a little bit bigger yardage of the material so um, it just kind of depends but on this one I think I'm pretty sure about go ahead and, and um, taking these apart into into the different panels here so like the seam that's right there 
and sometimes on denim whether it be jeans or like a skirt or a jacket or something I will keep them together because I might want to use this part like as a spine on a journal or you know something like that but I'm gonna go ahead and just take these panels apart same thing just gonna be using my um, seam ripper and any uh, scissors my fine point scissors here if I get to an area where I can't really get the seam ripper underneath the actual thread because as I've said a hundred times already sorry guys I want to preserve as much of this as I can because this is really unique fabric if it was um you know it's like a normal cotton print or you know denim or like a linen or something I would probably be a little bit um uh more the mindset to just take my scissors and just cut as close to this as I possibly can but I want to pick this apart and that's not going to be very exciting so I'm just going to go ahead and start picking these panels apart and then this top piece up here this pink lining or this pink uh, trim right here that was kind of a nice surprise have that right there um, just really cool so I can use this as well if I want to continue to take this apart you know I can pick apart multiple pieces but what I'll do is just take the panels apart and then just leave kind of the waistband and then I'll put them to the side and then use them um, for a future project or future fabric pack. So, all right, I'm gonna get to it. And the next up is going to be one of the jackets. So I will see you guys soon. Okay, so I wanted to show you an alternative to taking the time to pick apart the threads if that's not, you know, something you are wanting to do or have time to do. I will just, you know, put down my cutting uh, mat and just kind of go along, put my ruler here so I don't go all wonky because that's what I do sometimes, is I'll just put it right up next to the, uh, the seam and then I'll just, you know, sorry, that's the microwave. I'm heating up my lean cuisine um, for lunch. So I will just, you know, go down like this and then just, you know, cut it apart or use the rotary trimmer. So again, I'm not showing you guys something that's never been done before. I'm just showing you what I do and my little, you know, th ways of making a project a little bit quicker so I can spend more time stitching. Um, even though I enjoy taking these things apart, I do like to spend most of my time, you know, actually creating something. So, and then I'll go back through and, you know, pick apart the top because I don't want to run a cut straight through here because I want to keep this long band together if possible. If not, you know, then I'll, of course, have to just do what I need to do to get this apart. But I'll just do this other side real quick. And I just kind of butt my ruler up next to the seam right there. And go like that and then just trim along here as close as possible sometimes I may not get right up to the seam and then I'm able to just pull these apart and if you're not concerned about trying to preserve like the hemline or on the waist you can just cut right through it or take your scissors and then just cut this off of course and then I keep all this there's hardly anything that I toss from um, deconstructing clothing because you can use all these little bits of fabric for all kinds of fun things and I'll do a, a separate video down the road of where I'm using different you know kind of like scrap pieces or leftover bits from clothing and how I incorporate them into my different projects that I do so all right microwave went off so it is time for me to go eat my lunch and I'll be back So as you can see here, I have the skirt cut down into the panels and we have that. Uh, I'm going to keep this part on. Um, I have to kind of stop myself because I really enjoy cutting down the fabric, but I want to leave this as it is with the hem on there. So when I go to use this, I will have some options and we'll decide what kind of a project I want to use this on when I get to that point. So. There is that piece, and then here's an, oops, sorry for that loud scissor noise, and here's another panel, same thing. I even kept the um, dart in there, the pleat, just because I want to have that option if I want to utilize that for something. And then this is the waistband right there. And we'll keep that as it is as well, kind of fold it up, and then again, this is the last panel, so got that part done keeping the zipper so that's quite a nice pile of um, some fabric and different textiles to use for some different projects okay let's move on to one of the dress jackets okay and so for this purple beauty here 
Um, I never do the same thing on each piece. It just kind of depends on, you know, how much time I have and how much I want to preserve of a certain part of the garment. So I'm just going to go ahead and just make like a small tear. Let me get my glasses here. Not a tear, a little cut is what I meant to say. And just kind of find a little tiny corner here because the stitching on here um, is really really good it's like really nice um, stitching and I I don't think I will be able to even see all of the stitches even with my readers on so because it blends in so well which is the point of that when you're making the garment of course so I'm just going to go ahead and just do a little tiny cut down here in the very bottom corner and you may not be able to see you guys because I got to kind of hold this up where I can see um, what I'm doing okay so I just made a little tiny slit right there and then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to my glasses for this part, and I'm just going to go ahead and go in here and just kind of start cutting through. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of start with my smaller scissors first. You guys, I have no set way that I do a lot of this stuff. It just kind of depends on the material. So, you know, you might see me switching around to like three different types of um, items to cut. And I want to make sure I'm not cutting into the actual outer textile because that's what I want to preserve the most because this is just again polyester so I'm trying to stay away from there as much as possible so I'm probably going to leave end up leaving like a little strip right there and I'm fine with that because when I go to use this later on then I can have the um, opportunity to remove that part if I want to so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of snip this all the way down you probably could tear it but I kind of want to have a little more control with this and kind of get up underneath that shoulder pad there get into the corner or the corner <laughs> the shoulder I meant to say Let's see here go around like that so this is pretty much what I'm going to be doing on the um, rest of this jacket with the lining so I will go ahead and do that and then I'll come back when I get the lining completely off of the jacket then we'll kind of take a peek at the deconstruction of the actual jacket so I'll see you guys in just a minute so for the lining kind of the same situation as the purple one so I'm just going to go ahead and make another small slit again like I did before kind of get myself started here with the smaller scissors okay and then we're just going to kind of do the same thing this one's a little bit easier to see through because it's not such a dark um, shade so I can kind of see where um, it's folded over here the the seam allowance right there I can see that a little bit better than I could on the purple so I'm going to go ahead and just cut down this just like I did on the purple one and then we will start to take apart the jacket uh, once I get all the lining cut away and kind of start um, deconstructing the jacket where I have the collar piece and the different panels and the sleeves. I could just keep this as a whole jacket once I take the lining out but I like to you know break it down when I have the time to do so because when I sit down to actually do some stitching and working on a journal or whatever my project may be I want to spend that time actually creating something so I like to kind of have my stuff prepped as much as possible for that purpose. Okay and we're coming to here part of the collar so I'm going to kind of turn around you guys can kind of see inside there where I'm cutting I'm trying to work around the shoulder and then starting to um, get past that shoulder pad and just going around and cutting out the lining so I'll come back when I have this part done and we'll move on to the rest of the jacket okay and so for the inside of the sleeve it's going to be the same situation as the bottom of the these a little bit sharper here friend of point I should say as I did on the other part of the lining and I may use my smaller ones we'll kind of see how I go about this all right so this is going to be just fine and once I get this done I should be able to just to pull this out of the sleeve unless there's another um, attaching stitch um, inside there which I'll find out in a moment so let me see okay so that's a little bit thicker part here where they stitch the seam on the outside. Right here, there's a seam right there. So this is a little bit thicker piece right here. And I just cut through it and then just keep on going on here. And we will just continue this. Some of my snips on this part are a little jagged and that's I'm okay with that um, because you know I can definitely salvage this piece of the, you know, the lining because there's a lot there. Okay, let's see if this is going to pull right out. And it did, like magic. So you can see some a string there, just kind of, or thread, I should say, to hold that together. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and just finish off the same thing here with the um, 
other sleeve and then I'll be back when I'm ready to take this apart a little bit more. All right, so now for the sleeves, what I will do, let's grab my scissors here and I'm just gonna make a small snip anywhere on the sleeve, it doesn't matter where. And let's see, I'm trying to decide if I want to do it on the inside or the outside because I uh, will do both. So let's just kind of go here. I'm just gonna make a small little cut again. See, I might need to do it this way. Might need my little bit bigger ones here. Yeah, there we go. And then um, I have this little slit right there, so that's gonna allow me to go through here and cut off the sleeve. But I wanna, I think I wanna do this on the outside so I can kind of have a little more control as to where I'm cutting. Yeah, I can see a little bit better on this side. So where'd that little hole go? There it is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do this and cut around the seam here that is attaching the sleeve to the main part of the jacket. And again, I'm fine if I have some overlay like that because this, you know, when I go to use this in whatever project or whatever, I can always trim that part away. It's not that, um, you know, big of a deal. So, all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on with doing this and then I'll finish off the purple jacket. I switched the blue because I wanted to kind of talk you through what I was gonna be doing because my husband just uh, got back home and he's got another meeting coming up. So I'll have to do this next part um, again with you know music or I might do a voiceover later. So, but that's basically what I'm gonna do is take off the sleeves and then kind of what you guys saw me doing with the skirt, I will you know remove the collar off here and then I'll break this down into um, more manageable uh, pieces by cutting down the into the panels again like I did before. So just kind of cut along there. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do with a purple one. And I'll come back when I get everything done. I'll be taking off the buttons, of course. All right, I'm gonna continue on and I'll see you guys when I get both of the jackets all the way taken apart. So for this one, I'm cutting this one down a little bit differently than that I did uh, the blue one, which is normal because each coat or article of clothing is assembled differently unless it's, you know, the same one in a different size or something like that. So let's see here. When well, you might hear some clicking in the background, um, Steve is doing some work on the computer. So 
just in case you wonder what that clickety clack is that is what it is so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cut these uh, off kind of like in sections or panels I'm just following along the line here the seam and going to go ahead and just kind of go down and follow that so and have this front panel piece inside panel piece I should say cut away from the main body of the jacket here so and this is really nice thick textile right here this is really really nice really good quality so I'm so happy to have found this and it's in purple I mean what else could I ask for right <laughs> so it's a win-win for me and I'm just gonna go in between the buttonhole here and the edge of the jacket and so I'm just gonna keep cutting down like this you guys nothing you know like I said earth shattering or anything like that just kind of showing you how I do it and then I'll uh, continue on with cutting this down into you know some more manageable size pieces so when I go to use it for a project or something I'm not having like I mentioned already I'm not having to spend some time you know taking or excuse me cutting down the item and that'll give me more time to actually be creating something even though I love doing this a lot I really do it's very enjoyable for me so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of end it there and then over here is where I started the cutting and so you can see it's getting removed from the main body of the jacket so I'm going to continue on with that and then when I come back um, I should be pretty much done with uh, taking this apart because it's a lot like what I did in the blue coat for um, you know for the most part of it and then cutting down the polyester lining so I'll kind of chit chat with you when I get to that point and talk about the different shoulder pads that come in these types of clothing so I will see you guys in a little bit Okay, shoulder pads, let's talk about those for a moment. So I already took care of the first set that was from the blue jacket and I was saving this one so I could chit chat with you guys about it while I'm kind of cleaning off the threads and stuff. So I keep these. Sometimes I don't if I feel, you know, that they're just not like if it's it's a if it's like a really well-worn jacket or something, sometimes they get broken down or sometimes the coats won't even have shoulder pads at all. And so, you know, it just kind of depends on how they look. Sorry about that. I had to stop for a second so I could get my camera to stop bouncing like that. So this is just batting, you guys. That's all this is. And this is great for so many projects. If you're doing um, you know, like small uh, quilts or like coasters or things like that, you can obviously stitch these together and make a larger piece if you wanted to do that. Or what I would probably do is to use some type of a double-sided uh, fusible or even like some spray adhesive or something if you wanted to do that. And that's something I learned from quilters. That is not something I just like knew. <laughs> so let's just be real about that. So I um, like to use these because these are great for backing fabrics if you want to have like a padded journal cover padded like needle book or something like that so I keep these I don't throw away stuff as much as I can possibly salvage I will keep it because it can all be repurposed into other things and kind of give it another life pull out this one last purple thread here there we go so that is my little ditty on the shoulder pads so what I have left of the purple the beautiful purple jacket and the buttons, they are metal. I can't remember if I stopped and told you guys that or not when I was doing this, because I've been stopping and starting doing other things around the house. But so these are metal, really, really cool. Only had two, but that's all right. And I'm just gonna kind of clean these up. I don't want any of this uh, filler right here, like this, you know, the leftover bits of the batting. So I'm gonna pick all of that off. I won't make you watch me, because how boring would that be? And just kind of do that and kind of clean up some of the threads and a little bit of the polyester, that little bits that are on there, because as I mentioned before, I keep all of this, especially because it's purple. I mean, it's so beautiful. So that's what I'm gonna focus on now, just kind of getting those edges and everything cleaned up. And then I'll come back on and show you guys everything when once I'm all done, uh, we will wrap up this video. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. And just like that, it is all deconstructed and ready to use in all kinds of fun projects. And here is the stack of the blue women's jacket and then the lining. I did cut the lining down into little bits, smaller pieces for this particular jacket. And then here are the four sets, or excuse me, two sets of um, the shoulder pads from each of the jackets. The skirt, beautiful, beautiful. And then here is the polyester lining from the skirt with the zipper. And then this strip here that was part of the seam. And then this is my favorite, and I think you guys are gonna know why. So much purple. So this one here is the other jacket. 
And then I did have some smaller pieces that I cut, um, trimmed down that I mentioned to you I was going to do. And then I put those there. And then this is the lining. Now this one I did not cut down yet. And the reason why is because I obviously enjoy working with purple things. And I like to have this much real estate on here. So if I want to make, maybe I want to stitch um, like a pillow cover, like, you know, like a small decorative pillow cover or something like that. I wanted to kind of have most of the material together for me so I can spend more time on the decorative aspects of the project so that's what I chose to do there so I hope that I was able to maybe answer any questions that somebody might had on how to take apart you know um, clothing deconstruct it again as I mentioned before this is not anything new or groundbreaking by any means at all so to, please don't think I'm um, trying to make it sound like oh nobody else does it this way well I'm sure everybody does <laughs> you're basically pulling apart thread and cutting down fabric is what it is but I wanted to just to kind of share that with you because I I have had people in the past ask me how I take apart clothing when I thrift it. Normally I just do it on my own. I think I might have done a jacket or a pair of jeans before. I can't remember. If I can find that video, I'll link it below. But um, normally I just do this on my own, listening to some music or whatever. Oops, almost forgot about the buttons over here. These are the bonus, that's for sure. I wound up with all these uh, leftover buttons too. So sometimes I've even thrifted things um, or at yard sales just because I like the, you know, the different accessories, like maybe the buttons or the belt or something, and maybe the, the shirt, the, the jeans or whatever are a little bit just like normal, I guess you could say, but they might have some really cool buttons or some type of a really neat embellishment or accessory piece to it. So that is something else that I look for. Now I wanted to show you, these are the, um, I almost said dryer sheets. <laughs> these are from the lint roller, the lint roller sheets from when I was taking apart the purple. I did it with the blue too, but I don't think it had as many because the, the purple jacket really wanted to, um, you know, lose a little bit more of the material. Like it was more, more, uh, had more of a loose fiber, loose weave, I guess you could say. So I have all of these here and I think they're really cool and pretty. So you guys will see in a future video what this is all about. And then also, this is my bag where I keep like all my um, extra fibers and strings and things when I launder um, different fabrics and textiles and clothing. So this is stuff right here. Is I'm keeping those the blue. I just put some of the yellow in there and um, I just pull from this and this is great texture and you guys are going to see uh, a couple videos fairly soon on how I incorporate this as well and I think that was everything I wanted to share with you guys so if you do have any comments um, or questions or anything about what I did or maybe you want to let me know how you do it maybe it's a better time saver I don't know this may not be the quickest method the way that I do it but it's just you know I enjoy this kind of stuff though I could iron all day I could clean all day I could do laundry all day I could do this all day I love that kind of stuff and so you know maybe it's uh, you guys might have a quicker method on how you would deconstruct it but for for me, you know, I'm happy with how I do it um, just because of those reasons. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you soon. And so will some of these materials winding up in projects and or stitch and fabric kits. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.